This new NAT node costs nothing to implement, but it makes your AI agents three times smarter. And in this video, I will show you three practical use cases of how you can use this new tool to reduce your costs, get a better chance of your AI agent do exactly what you need it to, and use it to make your AI agent sound less like an AI and more like a human. And just as a quick background, if you're not aware, the reason why newer models like OpenAI's O3 are considered smarter versus their previous counterparts is because of their ability to reason, which is basically a fancy way of saying that before they provide an output to you as the user, they first think about it step by step to make sure that whatever the user's request is has been closely followed. And if we look at OpenAI's documentation, the way it works in practice is quite literally by taking several steps before providing you the final output where in the very first step, if you provide it a certain input, it will generate a first step output, but then feed that into itself, which allows it to think about its response more clearly until it gets to a stage where it is comfortable that the output that it provides you adheres to what you want. And so what's great about N8N is that they introduced this think tool node, which does the same thing. It allows an AI agent to do some thinking before answering. And because it's free and is a native tool by N8N, you should definitely be adding it to every agent that you can simply by clicking on the tool subnode here and searching for the think tool, which when you add that, there is a default description here that you can refine so that it allows your AI agent to use it depending on your use case. And when you add that to your AI agent, then effectively you have just upgraded it to have reasoning capabilities, which would improve its output. So how does it work in practice? When you start your journey with working through N8N, it's pretty common for you to encounter errors where if you're trying to pass along a request to an external third-party tool, you can encounter errors where the formatting didn't adhere to what that third-party tool accepts. And so here, for example, you can see that the error says that the JSON parameter needs to be valid. And JSON is basically just the formatting of text that a lot of third-party tools are accepting. And so if I open that up, you can see this is just an example request that I have set up. And if you scroll down to this JSON area and maximize that so we can see what's going wrong, you'll see that my input here is basically an expression that lets me get a value coming from the AI agent. And the result for this specific scenario is this green text here, which is basically a voice text, like what the voiceover will be, and an image prompt. And the problem here is that it's not that obvious what the issue is, but if you just copy this, and if you paste it into ChatGPT, you'll discover that the issue is this part of your JSON that has double quotes. And the fix to this is also provided by ChatGPT here. But obviously, since this is an automation that needs to run every day or even every hour, then you would need a systematic way for you to solve this, right? And so if we just add a think tool, and if we open this one up, you can see that I have the standard N8N tool description here. But if I open that, you can also add some custom instructions to it, like this one, where it allows you to provide an instruction to the agent to first check for JSON formatting issues before passing along the values to the next node. So you can see here that we have instructions about correcting that double quotes issue so that your automation doesn't break. And now if we run this automation again, you'll see that it used the think tool and it was able to properly use that next node without any JSON formatting issues. And if we open up this agent and we look at the logs, if you haven't explored this yet, it's basically a way for you to see what the AI agent did for this particular execution. And you can read that from top to bottom, what essentially happened is we provided this input, which is our system message. It used the think tool in order to double check its output. And then finally, this structured output parser, which helps it format the JSON correctly. But this time, making sure that there are no double quotes, which is causing errors. And the other thing that's great about the think tool is that it actually allows you to automatically solve for problems which are much harder to troubleshoot. So in this example, where we're trying to do the same thing, which is post a request to this third party tool, if you just look at N8N, it's all green. So it appears like it actually didn't encounter any errors. But if we go to the tool that we are using, which is JSON to video in this case, you'll see that that request actually resulted to an error. And if we click what the error says, it's saying that there's an empty string or a piece of text that is in one of the elements that we passed to it. And so if we open up this HTTP request and then again inspect the JSON format that we are passing along, you'll see that yes, our AI agent provided a voiceover text and an image prompt for the very first scene, but it actually didn't define any other voiceover text or image prompts here, which resulted to that error. And so what you can do is to again add a think tool that if you open that up and expand the description, you can have a command here that basically asks it to check for the number of outputs that it is providing you. At least for this case, we need it to exactly be 10 scenes. And so we are prompting it as such. 
So now if we run that agent again, but this time with a think tool, you'll see that it is using that node in order to make sure that the output it passes aligns with the number of objects that you want. So if we open this up and expand our request, you'll now see that it made sure that it provided 10 scenes, which is why all of the objects here in the result area is colored green. And again, if we click on that AI agent and inspect the logs, you'll see that it used the think tool again in order to make sure that it follows your instructions, which is good. And finally, one of the other best use cases of this think tool is for cases when you want your AI agent to sound more human and less like an AI. So if we open up this node and expand it, you'll see that there's a short prompt here where you can ask your agent to review their work first to check it like a human would and even add a list of AI sounding or corporate sounding words, which you want to avoid. There's probably more use cases beyond that. And the good news is this think tool is free to add in any N8N AI agent that you're building. So it should be a good idea to experiment with it in your next workflow. So if you want a copy of these workflow toolkits, which if you're setting up a new agent, you can actually just copy that and paste that into your workflow and attach it like so. I just made it available in our community, which you can find in the link in the video description. And if in case you haven't heard of the Robo Nuggets community before, here our mission is to make AI easy to learn and earn from. And so you'll find a lot of courses and tutorials, which are step-by-step -step lessons, which you can have access to, along with ready-to-load automation blueprints for N8N as well as make.com. It's also a strong community of AI practitioners that we have built. And you can see we also post a lot of paid opportunities here, either by myself or by other members of the community. One of my favorite posts, at least in the past week, is this post by Savvy, where he was able to secure a longtime client through one of the paid opportunity referrals that we made in the Robo Nuggets community. And because he did such a good job, the client was so impressed that they want to continue working with him, which is amazing. So if you want to take part in that plus much more, then just check out the community in the link in the video description. That's it for this one. See you guys next time. Thank you.